So I wanted to talk about these baby rabbits today. Uh, now, Mama Rabbit was a solid blue, okay, like this. Mama, Mama looked just like this. It, whoa, almost dropped him. And then the dad rabbit looked like this, a broken blue. Squirmy little things. <laughs> little thing just growled at me. So I wanted to talk about why or how would we get, say, a red rabbit or something like this. So what's going on is, you know, I recommend when you guys have rabbits, when you're breeding rabbits, it's so beneficial to breed blue rabbits with blue rabbits, red rabbits with red rabbits, white rabbits with white rabbits. And it's good to keep things consistent because when somebody buys a red rabbit, they're, they're most likely breeding that blue rabbit with a blue rabbit so they can, you know, get more blue rabbits. And when they take, say, this rabbit and breed with their blue rabbit and only get a majority of what they wanted, that's not as good as, you know, 100% or consistent litters. And, and that's what you want. You know, some folks don't care about mixing up colors and things, and, and that's probably a newbie or most likely a, a beginner. Uh, and, you know, I did the same thing. You know, when I was young, or young, when I was starting out, I, I mixed them up. But what happens is you don't get those consistent results and you know it's it's important to try your best to stack the the genetics and what i mean by that is you know so you have a a dominant and a recessive um, when you, when both of them uh, match that's called homozygosity so what's going to happen is when you when you breed that rabbit with another rabbit of the same color and it has all these consistent genetics your the chances that your results will be what you want is better. So now if color isn't important to you, you know, that's one thing. You're not, this is something you're not going to have to worry about. But um, if you guys are going to entertain the idea of selling rabbits down the line in the future, um, you want a good quality rabbit. You want a, a, you know, a quality product. And you can provide rabbits to your customers. And if it's a good rabbit, years later they'll come back, they'll buy more rabbits or they'll, they'll spread the word and they'll share uh, the fact that they got good rabbits from you. And so it's probably in your best interest when you're ready to start breeding correctly and that's, you know, try to keep those consistent colors. Now, how did this happen? So, you know, the red, the red doesn't have um, like a regular, it, it actually requires wideband. Wideband is a genetic, is a secondary gene that actually stretches the bright color in the shaft of the, of the, the hair. Kind of works like extension does. But, uh, so what happened was at some point down the line, a red rabbit is in the genetics. So I looked back into the, the genetics and way down the line, uh, there was a grandparent that was red rabbit. There was a chestnut rabbit that uh, had the chestnut gene from um, a red rabbit. So this genetic, so this gene was a recessive gene that was riding in the back seat. I sometimes refer to it as, you know, the dominant gene will show, it'll be expressed in the offspring. But those rabbits, just because this rabbit shows that it's broken or EN is the, is the gene, which stands for English, uh, this basically still has genes that you can't see. Now broken is dominant, but that doesn't mean that there's not a recessive. Look at this little peanut. This peanut's still hanging in there. I mean, look at the size difference. Well, that one's actually kind of small too. Try to get a big one. I mean, look at the size difference. That's the same litter. Sadly, this rabbit most likely isn't gonna make it. You know, this is the, the runt of the litter. And this is a litter of 11. I'm gonna give it its best shot. If I had another litter at the same time, I would actually take this rabbit and I would put it in the other litter. But for somehow, some way, this rabbit is still getting milk. So what's happening is mama's being a good mama and she's making sure all her kits are fed before she gets out of the nesting box. And how I do that is I don't necessarily come in here and I, you know, inspect all the kits one by one. What I do is I take really good care of mama. I give her peace, I give her quiet, I give her lots of fresh water, lots of pellet, I double her feed portions, and then I'll increase the fat content in whatever she's eating. In a separate dish or on a resting board, I'll put some whole oats or some black oil sunflower seeds, and this 
this will help her lactation and she's going to be able to give these kits what they need and they're going to be able to maintain these these big round bellies um, you can see how these these kits and they're so wiggly I can't really get them on their back but but they have nice round bellies and you can see how they're they're good shape now a lot of people get really upset when they come out here and they say um, or they see that their kits or these baby rabbits aren't uh, they're not moving maybe and yesterday maybe they were screaming and hopping around well in most cases they're hopping around because they smell or they hear activity with your hand in here and that will get them excited and they think it's mama that's here ready to nurse them so they get really excited but what I do is I try not to ins over inspect. I don't try, I mean, folks get so excited when they finally have their litters. They want to take one of these rabbits and they want to take it in. They want to play with it. They want to put it on their chest. They put it in their shirt. And, you know, I've always, I, I don't recommend that. I'll put a video up in the corner. Wait, no, it's this corner. I'll put a video up in that corner that shows a lot of, um, you know, maybe some of the mistakes that you can do. And, and it, the video is actually called uh, Do's and Don'ts. So, I uh, just wanted to share that information and then plus, you know, about six days, five, six, seven days, right around there. Originally, this litter was actually, uh, was born in this box. All this was was a uh, nesting box, I'm sorry, a hide box and we flipped it over and turned it into a nesting box because we were all out of uh, nesting boxes at the time. And what we did was about day five, six or seven, we came in here and we moved them into this, this uh, nesting box because this nesting box is a little bit bigger and you know after a few days they have their fur about day three they're covered in fur and they can handle the the temperatures a lot better you don't have to worry about them um, breaking into clusters now from time to time if they break into two clusters you can just push them back into one cluster until they get their fur I can't believe how small this one is that guy is so tiny so but he's hanging in there. I seen him uh, on day one and I just thought he was gonna be a goner. So every single day I've been watching him and he's still hanging in there. There's another little one too. This one's kind of little, but he's, he's gonna make it though. You can, you can notice a peanut because their head, a, a peanut is actually a dwarfing gene. It's not common. So this could actually just be a runt. You know, a peanut actually has a fatal gene uh, the peanut gene is when the head is too big for its body and it just can't digest food and it just doesn't, it's very small too, which doesn't help things and it has a hard time getting to a nipple or fighting, having a fighting chance of getting able to nurse, being able to nurse. So these these kids are just so active and they're waiting for mama, like where the heck's mama? They're searching this nesting box because of all this racket I'm making. So once I... Once I take this nesting box back to mama and I let them calm down, they'll all cluster back up and they'll stop moving around because again, they think they're getting nursed. So, you know, right again, right about a week is when I move them into a brand new clean nesting box. I don't always use this. It was just one of those things, you know, you can use a nesting box and if it was the same nesting box, um, if you only have one, then I would just take them and I would maybe use something like this or even like a tub or a, a, even a big bowl or something or a box maybe not a bowl, a box rather, and put them into a box temporarily for a minute while you dump everything out, put fresh shavings and put some straw back in here and then put them back if you only had one nesting box. But usually um, it's a good idea if you're kindling your rabbits often, it's good to have you know at least one nesting box per kit, I'm sorry, per dough, that way um, you don't ever run out and you're never in one of those situations where you have to make a nesting box out of say a shoe box or something so but I uh, just wanted to share this information you guys and you know rest assured that mama if you take good care of mama she'll take good care of her kits as long as she's not um, you know like a new mama you know sometimes they tend to mess things up uh, just because their instincts really haven't kicked in yet um, if anything happens you know, be sh be sure to rebreed your your mama rabbit after a couple days. If they lose the litter for whatever reason, you're not going to hurt mama rabbit. These rabbits are made to kindle often, and if you know, if we were out of the picture, that rabbit would find a buck and be bred within a day or two from having her litter anyway. So that's what wild rabbits do. Um, so just know that um, they're not going to. You know, they they wouldn't claw a buck's eye out. And you'll notice that she'll lift. She'll be very receptive. She will lift. Uh, easily you know sometimes if you wait too long you'll actually run into trouble with stubborn does or just behavior stubborn behavior so 
uh, just rest assured she wants to reproduce and she wants to have another litter so um, so try to rebreed if, if that's the case and I'm sorry if you did lose a litter you know it does happen don't let it slow you down don't don't give up uh, because the next litter will probably go better so hope you guys enjoyed this video please leave all your questions and comments below I'll either answer them I may even uh, recommend a video that we've already did to answer some of those questions and until next time we'll see you on the next video for these rabbits so if you're <coughs> bug <coughs> I inhaled a bug Ugh.